welcome to my house, <laughs> the hill. My name? First, I can't believe you, human. I've come back here today in order to see you, to see my house and my gardens again, and to uh, take you on a little tour. Here we are on a, a path, which is in fact, it's a public right of way. And it was always a bit of a thorn in my flesh when I lived here. 10 years after I moved in, I acquired this land here next door, a house called Heath Lodge. And I was able to uh, take that over as an extension to my garden. Unfortunately, because of this path here, I couldn't uh, actually join them. So my architect, my garden architect, the architect, a very celebrated man, Mr. Thomas Mawson, author of The Art and Craft of Garden Making, a very fine book, who designed the gardens and the pergola. He also found a brilliant solution, of course, in erecting this bridge to link my original garden with the new garden <laughs> over at Heath Lodge. line on the side wall and that was where the, the glassed in binary ran all the way along here to catch the the south facing sun and I was I was at my wits end to know where how I would build this up and get the necessary earth for it well it so happened they were building the the Hampstead extension of the underground to Golders Green and they digging all this earth out and they had nothing to do with it so uh, they very kindly paid me uh, to take it off their hands. And in fact, they brought it up in, in wagon loads. And it became the basis for these level gardens and creating these terraces, which you see here. So there's an enormous amount of earth has gone in here, all by hand, of course. Nothing was mechanized in those days. In all, it took place with over, a, say, a 19-year period. And the pergola was added to in sections. The original section, we're standing on one corner of it, came around here, it was an L shape. So it went up there and then to the right. Now, the, the section you've just walked along was an, another addition. When I built the pergola, originally we had a conservatory here and I had to take it down when the first extension to the pergola was built there over the bridge and into the Heath Lodge garden. So uh, and I, call this, uh, I call this the temple, hence the uh, proliferation of uh, pillars. And there's the house itself. The hill, which I, I made great improvements to when I lived there. I had a bit of an argument with my, uh, a bit of a discussion with the architect about whether we should see the view as we approach it. Oh along the pergola, but he was very adamant about uh, 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 making this uh, self-contained garden 
room in here, so that you then came out and whoa, you had the surprise of the view. And I, I, I see now, I can see now that this was a really good idea. more romantic than the formal garden at the back of the house, owing a little more to perhaps the 18th century and uh, Capability Brown, that uh, we wanted to, to merge more with nature, almost to retain a certain sense of wildness as you, as you, move, as you move through the park. Thank you very much again for being my guest today and I'm going to return for a final solitary stroll through my gardens and uh, and to return to well my place in history perhaps I really enjoyed the tour and I didn't know the pergola was there um, so I'll certainly be visiting that again and um, I also realized part of the way through the tour that, that my dad who's also from that part of Lancashire used to work for Lever Hume in the um, in the palm oil and then the ice cream tree. Um, we live quite close to Hampstead Heath, so this is a part we haven't actually seen before. And we think it's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> That's fantastic, and it's really great to know about areas that isn't actually publicly known. And it was fantastic nature and views, and it's really good, and it's nice meeting new people as well.